for the last few days. But in the summer, we're all fired up, all really excited about the Olympics. And then we all watched it during the summer holidays. And then in September, some year six children were lucky enough to go to Media City for an Olympic legacy day. And so we don't just all forget about the Olympics, especially when we take down our displays. We have to still remember and think of all the things that made us excited this year. We've got Jeff Thompson, who's Thank come you. to our assembly this morning, to just talk about his involvement with the Olympics and what he's doing to make sure schools like ours don't forget it. So you're very welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Ms. Harding. Good morning, Primrose Hill. Morning, Jeff. Who remembered my name? What's your name? Kenza. 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 Okay. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the Olympics, the Paralympics, why it was such a good experience. And you all watched the Olympics, didn't you? Yeah. How many of you actually play some sort of sport? Hands up. How many of you, is there anybody who doesn't like sport? <laughs> By the way, um, sport wasn't something I enjoyed when I went to primary school. So, I'll, like everything, I'll tell you a bit of a story because sport is so important, I believe, in everyone's lives. That's why I've dedicated the last number of years into giving sport back to young people, children like yourselves, giving a sense of purpose, giving a sense of direction, giving hope and giving dreams because I believe sport and the arts because I believe that it's about sporting, cultural and artistic expression, whether you can write, whether you can draw, whether you can perform, it's a form of expression. And when I was growing up and going to primary school like you, it was about just simply playing. We all play and we all like to have fun, don't we? Yeah. And um, I grew up in Wolverhampton and enjoyed myself within sport. And I played most sport, never thought about winning or losing for that matter. And then very quickly, because life can do that, I had my first I suppose feeling of unhappiness when my father died. My father died and I was very upset and I was very, very, very sad. And then we had to move from Wolverhampton to London, the east end of London. And all of a sudden, the colour of my skin, where I'd come from, and more importantly, my accent. And as you know, I've got a bit of a strange accent. Can you un do you all understand my accent? Yeah. Okay, so the east end of London, it's a long way from or to Law Salford. And um, very quickly, I found that what people look like, where people come from, and what they believe in can be very important. So I started having a few problems at school, but the one thing I always found when I needed to escape, when I was unhappy, was the PE hall or the library. And I want you to remember it is so important that it isn't just about the winning, it is about the taking part. I played most sports and PE, but I also had the ability to write. I liked English language. And my mother, who was then a widow, decided that a good education was even more important than sport. And she brought me up with Christian values because she felt that with values and with a gift, and I also believe that every single one of you have a gift. It's for your teachers to try and unlock that gift and then motivate and inspire that gift. But with a gift, and whether it's the ability to read, count, and to be able to use the words and communicate and express yourself, these are all life tools. And I learned very quickly that I could be confident and trust in myself with the teachers around me. Now, I had favourite teachers and not so favourite teachers, and the one that gave me the most discipline were the ones I always wanted to avoid. But it's amazing how 30, 40 years on, they're the people I most remember. Because it's so important to have people that can inspire you and motivate you. How many of you have heroes or 
dare I say it, celebrities. Ah. But how, how many of you have heroes or role models? Any of you? Do you know the most important role models? Yes? I, can, I know one, but I just can't remember its name. Oh, that's not, that's not important. A role model. Role model. A role model for me is, yes? Yeah. Excellent. Best answer I've had in the last number of months. Your parents are the best role models. The next best role models are your teachers. Heroes and heroines, such as those you saw at the Olympics and Paralympic Games, are people that can inspire you because they demonstrate that with hard work, dedication, discipline and dreams, with the help of others, that they can scale great heights and realise their dreams. And for me, that was to be the case. And once I had some confidence with the ability of being able to write and count and learn and develop some confidence through sport, I was able to use it when I made that difficult transition to secondary school. And secondary school was not a good time for me. But very quickly, I was able to again play sport and go to a leisure centre, a bit like the leisure centre just down the road. And I was to see one of the Olympians I'd watched on television in that leisure centre, and his name was David Emery. And he was really polite, he was really welcoming, and I decided to go back to that leisure centre, the Michael Sobel Sports Centre, and it was to change my life. I went and did karate, because I was bullied at school. I wasn't as big now as I was then, and I decided I needed to learn to defend myself. So I went in and I paid my 75p, and that, that was from a paper round, by the way, that I'd earned, and my pocket money. And all of a sudden, I found that it was giving me not only the confidence I needed, and by the way, I didn't ever have to fight in the rest of my years at Brookhouse Secondary, because I was now able to walk confidently, communicate confidently, and as a result, people left me alone. Because I actually believe that if you have the confidence, people, and bullies in particular, always go for the weak. So if you're strong, not in size, but in purpose, in energy, and in your abilities, and you know where you're going, you tend to be left alone. Not always the case, and if not, you're then protected by others. And very quickly, I gained my black belt because I had a curriculum, and I had lots of tests and exams, a bit like you do now. How many of you like tests and exams? Great, wonderful. Well, I always used to get nervous, very nervous. But it's great when you have nerves that you then draw on the hard work that you've put in and the confidence that hopefully will be inspired by others. All of a sudden, I started to compete because I wasn't identified as natural potential. And then all of a sudden, I started to win. Ironically, I won my first major British title in Manchester. So coming to Manchester 35, 37 years ago was a bit of an experience because you lot up north and us lot down south speak differently. So it's a different culture, different backgrounds. All of a sudden, I started to travel the world, different cultures, different backgrounds, different behaviours. People had to adapt. And all of a sudden, if you could adapt quickly, you started to settle in that environment, in that community. I won my first world title at the age of 25, and I then won a few more gold medals over the 80s, for those who can remember that far back. And then I found that winning gold medals were a bit like exams. You worked very hard, you set a goal, you had some targets, and then you had coaches and nutritionists and people that help you, a bit like your teachers, to be the best that you can be. And believe it or not, although I won quite a lot, I learned a hell of a lot from losing. Because losing, like life, will always reflect the unfair and sometimes hurtful things that can happen to you. But if you have some resilience, some character, some personality, I believe that it can help you overcome and survive. Because life is a competition. And once I'd won these world titles and they were like exams, I was able to then open doors because I'd grown up in a community and I was a product of my community. And as I had travelled, it broadened my mind. And I learnt that travel can be a wonderful education, a bit like that map of the world. 
and many of cultures reflected here in assembly reflect how diverse our world is. How many of you use computers now? Hands up. Good grief. So you're all connected to the world. You can all find out your information from one of the best teachers in the world, Mr. Google. But managing how much time you spend on it and remembering that the best software you have is between your ears will give you the ability to realise your full potential. Now, about 20 years ago, I was a sportsman that had achieved quite a lot, was putting something back into the community. I'd now moved to Manchester. I was looking at another career. I went to Salford University to establish um, a leisure division there. And Manchester were bidding for the Olympics, the 2000 Olympics. And I was an ambassador. And I always share this story because even when I recollect it now of the schools I would start to visit as part of my ambassadorial duties, it was a 14-year-old schoolboy whose name was Benji Stanley, whose life was lost on the streets of Moss Side. And at that time, a lot of national media attention was attracted to his life being lost because it reflected a new generation that had not had sport, had not had the arts, had not had a good education and not have the confidence and the ability to achieve in life. So I decided I'd go back on the streets and see if I could provide for a generation what I had had as a generation, which was just sport to develop in life, to give you an educational opportunity, a healthy lifestyle, and the ability to have self-discipline, and as a result, contribute to not being a sportsman or sportswoman, or a rap artist, or any of the things that would be very appealing and attractive nowadays, but to be becoming something that was a little bit more than that. Teachers, doctors, solicitors, head teachers, got to say that, MPs, but people in the wider community, people who are absolutely vital in keeping our community strong and vibrant. And I established something called the Youth Charter, and it was a charity that actually went into schools and communities and brought sport back into communities. If I said 20 years on, and through many experiences, from that tragedy, the Youth Charter is now a United Nations agency. Does anyone know where the United Nations are? Okay, with your teachers late, do you know the United Nations? It's Europe, isn't it? No, it's a global agency with the headquarters in New York, established by Helena Roosevelt, the first lady of the then United States, Frank Roosevelt, the then president, and it helps bring the world together with common values, charters, laws that will help governance the world. And it gave us a very global feel of what we could do and how we would do it. Many years on now, we've delivered to schools that have no roof, have no tables, have no chairs, have very few teachers. But the one thing they did have was the enthusiasm, and they were inspired. And they would inspire me to come back and come into the schools where we have what we consider to be so little, but do so much. So the Olympic Games this year and the Paralympic Games, which even more inspiringly show people who have overcome things that have happened to them in life, but are still able to be fast, high and strong in their dreams, and achieve and become the best that they can be. So the one thing I want to leave with you today is how important it is to have a good education. And not everybody will be a mathematician, not everybody will be a scientist, but they are so very important because when I needed treatment and I needed the right nutrition, I needed to have that expertise. But more importantly, I equally needed to have a teacher and after, I think it was 30 years ago, 30 years back, one of my most unpopular teachers were the teachers I invited last year to have lunch with me because, you know your school report, mine wasn't too good a school report. It was always, could try harder, could do better. But they had inspired me without realising it because the way they behaved, the way that they performed, the way that they spoke to me. And what I would say to you also is you always hold on to your dreams. Dream big. It's a big world now, and for all the challenges in the world, you're the ones that will help make it a better world. 
Now, the legacy, a word you will hear a lot about, that have followed these games is about inspiring a generation. So I, along with many other sportsmen and women, both past, present, are actually putting something back, a 21st Legacy along with the Youth Charter and so many others, charities, are working hard to see Sport for All inspire a generation for you to achieve in life. So have your dreams, work hard, get a good education, because it is, through Sport and the Arts, a platform from which you can achieve your dreams and be the best that you can be. So I'm not going to speak too much more, because you've been very patient, you've been very attentive, and I hope that once all the posters go down, that there'll be memories in your minds that will help you, inspire you, and motivate you. Thank you for listening. Please realise your potential, and then sorry will never have to be a word that's used too often, because when you use the word sorry, as Nelson Mandela, a very, very important and globally inspiring man stated, it can heal anything and everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. What is to think, especially you children at the back, be the best that you can be. And think about that all today, all tomorrow, and in the weeks and months and years to come, because I think that's an important oh. message. I always forget this, sorry, Miss Harding. I always interrupt as well. That's what a gold medal looks like. We call it the bling of the stadiums, not of the streets. And this is the only jewellery you I ever want to wear. It represents, like everything, an exam. An exam passed. I can also say I don't know whose medal this is, because my wife was a world champion. When I rushed out this morning, I wasn't sure what medal I picked up. But I would almost guarantee it's hers, because I think I know where I can find man, mine, but girls always know where they put things. So more than likely I've got my wife's gold medal. And it's a very peaceful household, the Thompson household. We have very little conflict. Just imagine when you grow up having a gold medal in your house. That's something to aim for, isn't it? Just imagine having two gold medals. So you've got such a lot of chances. Now let's be the best we can be singing this morning. What are we singing this morning? Well, we um, start this on the way. We're going to sing, today we're going to sing our uh, Harbour Chamber and uh, Thursday we're going to sing our other song. We tried to sing this last week, Mrs Harding, when you weren't here. We had some, well, before half term, we had some technical issues with the sound. But, I don't have to say that the children sang it amazingly well. So, we'll see whether this will work. Okay, this side, when we get to the bits of the end of the slips, you're going to keep singing the Thank You for the Harvest, and you're going to go back to the Cabbages in Green. Okay? Everyone know what they're doing? Yeah. Well, let's hope the music works today. No. Okay. Okay, so we don't have any, uh, any sounds. So, if you're ready, I'll start us off. So, when it hits the four, then it's time to start. Okay? One, two, three, four. Cabbages and beans. Boots, broccoli and beans. Cauliflower and roasted potatoes taste so good to me. Apricots and plums ripened in the sun. Oranges and yellow bananas, good for everyone. A festival, when we bring our fruit and vegetables, cause we want to share the best of all, the good things that we've been given. It's another opportunity to be grateful for the food we eat. With the Samba celebration, say thank you God, the Father. Okay, here we go. Golden wheat, oats and sugar beet, fluffy rice and tasty spaghetti. What to eat? 
coffee, coke, tea, growing naturally, purple plants and of spices, very nice indeed, to harvest for festival, when we bring our fruit and vegetables, cause we want to share the best of all, the good things that we've been given. It's another opportunity to be grateful for the food we eat with a samba celebration to say thank you to God the Father. Okay. Thank you for Thank you for the harvest. Thank you for your goodness, for all the fruit and vegetables, and the wonderful things that grow. Thank you for the harvest. Thank you for the goodness, for all the fruits and vegetables and the wonderful things that grow. Thank you for the heart. Thank you for goodness. The veg the vegetables must then to grow. Harvest festival, where we bring our fruit and vegetables, cause we want to share the best of all that the things that we've been given. It's another opportunity to be grateful for the food we eat with a samba celebration to say thank you to God the Father. Thank you, Jeff, for...